you know, Netflix or uh, Amazon Prime, right? Okay, so you're all familiar with the following um, warnings and disclaimers. So I'm gonna to speak to you today, uh, So, but it's gonna be MA, it's gonna be for mature audiences only. Uh, AL, um, I, I might use some adult language. And uh, C is, I'll talk about some, some you know, mature and adult situations. I'll tell you some stories from uh, the hospitality world. So, um, so I wanted to make sure we got that on the record. So, um, so hospitality, hospitality is uh, what you guys really, who is, is in hospitality because of your family is in the hospitality business, right? That's one way people get into it. I grew up in uh, the restaurant business, and so very quickly, I learned that I did not want to deal with food and beverage, right? So my grandfather owned a bunch of restaurants in New York, all different kinds, from fine dining to pizza places. And, you know, if he said to me once, and for those of you who have worked in F&B, you've heard the saying, right? If you've got time to lean, you've got time to clean. So uh, I knew very quickly. Plus, um, anybody working in food and beverage right now? few of you, right? I became very averse to the smell in the back of the house. I don't know what it is. A restaurant, you would think, smells like the food they're preparing in the kitchen area. But something happens with the food smell, the cleaning supplies, the dishwashing situation, the water. That smell is the same in every back of the house that I have been to. And I have been to thousands of back of the houses, whether it's in hotels or restaurants. So, um, and so the rest of you then, except for this one familial sort of setup here, thought hospitality be a good way to make a living, right? Is that, is, or did you look at it like I did and very pragmatically realized there can't be a whole lot of calculus and uh, advanced uh, physics theories involved in it. Um, so, you know, I kind of fell into the hospitality industry. Uh, I teach here at the University of Memphis now, have done so for six years. I teach a, uh, a few different courses. So I, I fell into this business. You know, when I was in high school, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna play baseball. That's what I was going to do to make a living. I was all state in New York and um, uh, just, uh, I was going, I had signed a letter of intent to play at a division one school. And then in the spring of my senior year, after I had signed in February, I um, hurt my elbow. And, you know, in 1978, 77, they weren't doing a whole lot of, for anybody who's familiar with sports procedures, they have something called Tommy John surgery, you know, where they take a muscle from another part of your body, replace a muscle there. Well, they weren't doing that to 17 year olds. And so all of a sudden I had to come up with a new plan. And, you know, because also, you know, I had these folks hanging over my neck, my parents were like, we didn't do. What are you gonna do? And uh, because I, you know, I, I, I grew up in Brooklyn, I grew up in an apartment, and so it wasn't like I was, you know, I had a business, family business to fall into or anything. I had to come up with something. And so I didn't know what to do. So I went to my guidance counselor in high school, right? This is last minute stuff, because I'm a senior now and it's March. And I say, hey, here's what happened. Um, what am I going to do? My parents want me to go to school. I want to go to school. Um, and uh, so, but I have no idea what to concentrate on. And so she said, well, let's take a look at this aptitude test you took in eighth grade. They're still giving those aptitude tests, I think, today. 
And so what came up on there was hotel management. And I said, hey, I like hotels. I've always had a good time when I've gone to one. And then I got pragmatic, like maybe some of you got and said, uh, you know, I can't imagine there's a lot of math or science involved here. So, you know, because I think I was like a solid 2-7, something like that, solid C-plus student. Um, of course, that was because I, I wasn't applying myself, right? If there was a class I liked, you know, I was all in, right? I mean, I would dig in and, you know, an A was not a problem. But if it was a class that didn't strengthen me, to use a politically correct term, um, I just kind of floated through and just did just enough to get by, right? And uh, so I said, hotel management it is. We found a school. I went to Niagara University up in Niagara Falls, New York. There weren't as many schools to choose from as well. So you had the ones everybody has heard about. You know, you had your Cornell's, you had your UNLV, Johnson and Wales. But again, um, I wasn't that committed, and my parents sensed I wasn't that committed to it. So <clears throat> Niagara University fit the bill. And, and so that's where I went. But before that, and this is, this is a little bit of a, a, a life lesson that I like to share with all of my students and with anybody who will listen. My daughter's done listening to this. Um, she's 28 and she's filled with all my little um, sayings. But uh, so I was, I think I was in probably seventh grade, eighth grade, and I remember this. And so my parents went up to, you know, they go up to parent-teacher night or whatever, or, you know, they talk to your teachers. And so they came home, and uh, I was laying on the couch, and Dad hit me in the back of the head and said, hey, jackass, get up. Because, you know, when he was really happy with me, that's what he called me, jackass. And he said, hey, I spoke to all your teachers. And they all said the same things. And I said, all right, there's consistency. So uh, he said, well, first of all, they said you're popular. He said, let me tell you right now, a circus act is popular. So that doesn't mean anything to me. He said, the other thing they said is that you have potential. And let me just explain to you my definition of the word potential, son. Potential just means that you ain't worth a shit to me right now, right? So I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, okay, dad's, you know, being a dick. And he just wants to get my attention. But how many people here in this room, and this is honest time, have been told you have potential, right? Just about everybody, if not all of you, and those of you who aren't raising your hand, somebody said it and didn't. And, and so, did you do anything with that information? Because when I was told I had potential, I used to think, that's awesome. I have potential, <laughs> right? And I would ride that potential ride until I'd forgotten about it, right? But I didn't do anything with that information, right? So, you know, somebody would tell me whether it was in a performance review or a, uh, a teacher or friends, you know, say, you've got a lot of potential, you know. And I'd say, thank you. Thank you. I have potential. Okay. And here's the lesson, is that when somebody tells you you have potential, that's a very intimate statement and they see something in you, or you've done something that strikes them as like, there is more to this person that's yet to be revealed. So you have a responsibility beyond thank you when somebody says that to you. You need to ask them, wow, you need to say to them thank you, but what can I be doing next? What can I do next? to further realize this potential. Explain to me 
what that means to you when you tell me I have potential, right? Because anybody here who studied physics knows that a rock sitting on a table has potential, right? In the scientific term, the potential to be moved or anything like that. So potential really is there's something good that can happen, but it's sitting idle right now. And so, because I, you know, and you can be getting told you have potential. You know, there's a, there's a uh, statute of limitations on potential, right? I can tell you that at 58 years old, nobody's telling me I have potential anymore. That, that potential ship has sailed, right? By now I should have actualized realized, done things to reach my full potential, which is what we're all striving for, right? You want to reach your full potential. Unless you've made a conscious decision that you want to bring excellence to mediocrity. <clears throat> so be it, right? Because there, you know, there was a time in my life when I would get a job, I'd get a great job, Right? I would learn everything about the job. I would be a standout. I'd get recognized for my work. And then I'd find the automatic pilot mode and I would just do what I needed to do to fulfill the basic responsibilities of that job and not get in trouble, but I certainly wasn't getting recognized for outstanding performance anymore because I had found some sort of a stasis, if you will. 